trying to take over by controlling your minds through television. Now it's time for a cheesy 80s horror film that 99% of people out there won't have heard of. It's time for The Brain. It's time for a beer as well if you've got one. Now in a nutshell, the gist of this movie is mind control from TV sets of random people who we don't care about and want to see die just because it's funny. So meet Jim who's a stereotypical high school rebel without a cause and here he is with his girlfriend Janet and the chemistry between these two is awesome. Just check out the opening scene. Come on. Oh wait. What? I'll see you in there. Where are you going? I gotta go to the bathroom. Hurry up. Save my seat. Brilliant. So Jim likes to play pranked by pouring sulfur into toilets. Oh Jim, you're amazing. And here's another example of the film's wonderful dialogue. Learning in civics class right now how you're innocent until proven guilty. So you think you're in America, do you? Last time I checked. Well, you're not. You're in high school. You left <laughs> what? What does that even mean? I don't care. So as punishment for being a little troublesome whippersnapper, old Jim is told that he's either going to be suspended, which means he won't graduate, or go see a lame doctor called Doctor Blake. Now, an important message from the world famous psychologist, Doctor Anthony Beryl Blake. Does your teenager have a discipline problem? Is he or she in trouble at school? I don't need to go to this guy, Blake. Everyone knows he's a flake. You can't make me. Oh, is Jim blasting out the poetry on the spot? Show off. Jim, Dr. Blake wouldn't be on TV if he wasn't good. Mom, everything you see on TV is the truth? Come on. Oh yeah, brilliant. Mother of the year right there. Words of wisdom, everybody. If he's on TV, he must be good. <laughs> so anyway, moving on, let's see some horror. So old Jim goes to treatment, and while Dr. Blake tries to do something, I don't know what, Jim starts to hallucinate about a topless female scientist as you do. Now you might be thinking the film is called The Brain because it's about mind control, but no, here's why. In the back of the lab, there's a giant brain that controls people's minds who watch Dr. Blake's awesome TV show. And it must be good, remember? Oh yeah, because it's on TV. So there you go, yeah, giant brain. But if you think Dr. Blake is mental, then suddenly you die. Check this out. But wait till I tell people what's really going on around here. Now take that thing where it belongs! And then the brain just turns into some random weird face type thing and Dr. Blake is apparently amazed. Come on, don't you think this is brilliant? Moving on, Jim is cruising just like Will Smith when he pulls his steering wheel apart and then gets attacked by a tentacle and shits his pants when he sees the brain. Oh dear me. Jim's okay though, so no need to panic. His car dies but old Jim doesn't care, just runs away. Then he tells Janet about apples, baseballs and blouses that float off. Seriously Jim, you're cracked before he really shows off his acting ability by fighting off more tentacles. Check it out. Priceless! Go on, Jim lad! So old Jim is taken to the mental hospital, but he breaks out thanks to some random patient. Seriously, the guy breaks in and says he'll swap places with Jim. Let me sneak in. You could sneak out. They'll think I'm you. They'll never find me in here. Okay. Bingo! That makes a whole lot of sense to me. Meanwhile, Janet and her friend Willie decide to break into the hospital and find Jim. We have to, Willie. What do you mean we have to? I don't know. Yet more jaw-droppingly shocking dialogue. Amazingly, Jim finds them. They run away, but poor Willie runs into the brain and dies. How does the brain even move around? I mean, I know that guys are no doubt pushing it along in a shopping trolley or something, but I want to see it floating around or running around on little legs with shoes on. It's not asking too much, is it? Now sure enough, as you can guess, I'm sure, Jim and Janet don't get far as the cop arrests them and then the assistant turns up to take Jim away yet again, but he instead decides to chop up the pig. Why did he do that? Why has his axe got no blood on it? And why does Jim look like he's wanting to laugh all the time? <sighs> so many questions. And if you're waiting for the answers, <laughs> forget it. Like, why does the assistant dude stand there and tell another cop this whilst holding an axe? 
fucking killed him! Chopped his head off! So we finally get to see some mind control when some stupid Bintu sits around watching daytime TV garbage, aka Dr. Blake's TV show, goes and has a little standoff with her husband to see who can act the worst. I'd like to watch Dr. Blake with me. No, you go ahead. I'm not interested. Come on. No. Yeah, I think he won that game, so as a result, she decides to chop him off and, of course, blame an old Jim. How she knew he was around in the back garden like a peeping Tom just passing is beyond me. Like I said, lots of questions, no answers. Don't worry about it. So what else could possibly happen? Well I started to lose interest as watching long boring chasers make me look around the room and wonder random things like how cool would it be to have a Zardoz seek with Sean Connery back in the hot seat? Zardoz? Or how many days is it till Halloween? I don't know, I don't care, but it's more interesting thinking about that than watching this film. So here's a clip of just how painful it actually is. So while old Jim is making his way to the hospital to save the day, I guess, Dr. Blake is having a conversation with the brain. 20 million people are going to see our show. And then you can transmit your brain waves into them directly. Are you sure? He won't succeed. Now, Jim gets into the hospital past all these cops who are obviously looking for him, but whatever, and he has a flashback to when his friend Willie was killed. Doesn't seem too bothered. Then he sees Topless Lady once again, and check out Jim's gormless face expressions and his inspiring acting skills. Vivian. You have a dirty mind. Yeah? Don't continue to resist. The brain will destroy you. No. You can't even control your own mind. Watch me. Priceless. Never again will you see someone pull off that kind of acting with such belief. This guy rocks. His mother doesn't seem to think he rocks though and tells people to get him. I didn't kill anybody. Get him! So Jim runs away some more, finds Janet locked up, starts to break her out, but then shits his pants and leaves her behind before he comes face to face with Dr. Blake. Now this is pure mentalness to the max. I laughed. Jim, you have come for help. So then old Jim gives some kind of lame speech to the brain dead general public. He's the one who was responsible for all those murders. I never killed anyone. I'm just a high school student. Uh, well, it doesn't mean that you can't be a killer boy, but it does mean that you're not an American. Just remember that little pearl of wisdom from your teacher. Everyone, please look at the TV monitor. Because you know that's the truth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Earlier on, didn't someone bearing a striking resemblance to old Jim say, don't believe everything you watch on TV? He's a walking contradiction. And an asshole. So he then runs away just because we've not seen him do this before, saves Janet, and then the brain pops up and eats the stupid henchman. So now Jim faces his greatest battle to date, fighting a giant rubber brain creature. I mean, it's awesome, and after smacking it in the nose for about 30 seconds, he realises he's holding his favourite thing in the world. And sodium will make killer brains explode apparently, so take note. So, all's well that ends well, and as Jim and Janet drive off into the sunset, I was waiting for something here to happen. And I waited. A lot. Uh, nice weather outside. Uh, maybe check out the official Shitcase Cinema page on Facebook if you've got time.
Oh, there you go, worth the wait. Here's my top five gym moments. Number one, when he agrees to see Dr. Blake the Flake, the school headmaster stands there and stares at the parents saying nothing at all so Jim can do this. Oh yes, I'll turn my back and stare at your parents so you can put glue on my seat. Number two, every time somebody says something to Jim, he looks like he's about to laugh. I mean, I guess the guy knew how stupid the movie was. I've been trying to figure out who he reminds me of. He's like a hybrid of the guy from The Gladiator and Mr. Campbell 2, aka Mark Overhold. Sorry, old bean. Number three, Jim wants to read the newspaper because he's front page news now. So why the hell does he pay for one just to read the headline? He could just read it through the glass display. Number four, he walks into the hospital towards the end and tries to disguise himself with a pair of shitcase cinema style shades. Okay, good effort, class, style, nice. But the first person to see him are his parents. Jim? Is that you? Jim, is that you? Seriously, it's your son, he's only wearing a pair of shades. Number five, Jim shows Dr. Blake who the boss really is. What the hell happened to me? I'm not some kind of guinea pig, you know. You're supposed to be helping me, not messing with my mind. It's all right, Jim. You just suffered from an hallucination, that's all. Get your hands off me, buddy. Hard bastard indeed. Now here's my top five random or bullshit moments in the brain. Number one, despite being intelligent scientists, they need a label on their machine telling them what it is. Number two, the stupid assistant scientist thinks the brain is an animal and it's hungry. I think it's hungry. Don't tease it. You goon! Number three, the brain. Where does it come from? The opening shot of the movie shows it chilling out in some green goo. But no explanation needed though because this movie is great. Number four, Dr. Blake being a sarcastic son of a bitch on his TV show. Thank you. A wonderful audience. So enthusiastic. And number five, the end credits give you a warning about sodium. See, this film is educational. Fact. So, that's The Brain. It's pretty amusing overall. It's just a low budget horror film, which I personally love. It makes no sense whatsoever, therefore it's comedy gold. But I'm still going to give it a pathetic 3 out of 10. Oh, by the way, just before I wrap this video up, for the people who think I'm Scottish, I'm not. In what retired universe do I sound like I'm from Scotland? I'm from the north of England, okay? Yorkshire to be precise, like Yorkshire puddings, Sean Bean. Um, Yorkshire puddings and Sean Bean sums it up pretty good. So yeah, thanks very much.